When a failing Japanese company chose to venture into the exciting new world of video games during the 1970s, few could have predicted the incredible adventures and lovable characters that would result from its efforts. More than 50 years later, Nintendo is still developing incredible video game consoles that are being enjoyed all over the world, and has created some of the most iconic and popular franchises, like Super Mario, The Legend of Zelda, and Pokemon, which to this day carry the torch from one generation to the next. It's time to wear your red cap because this is the evolution of Nintendo. Nintendo's rainbow road to success was a long one starting all the way back in 1889, when Fusahiro Yamauchi was looking for a way to boost his company's slumping sales of Hanafuda, a type of Japanese playing card. Hanafuda meant flower cards, and these cards were an alternative to normal playing cards that were illegal in Japan at the time. Yamauchi's idea was to sell a line of lower quality cards under the name of Tengu, a creature known for its long nose and associated with playing cards and illegal gambling. And so, he formed Nintendo Karuta. Karuta meaning playing cards, and Nintendo meaning leave luck to heaven. At least that's what many people use as a rough translation. But it turns out that translating old Japanese kanji into English isn't exactly straightforward. Other sources suggest that the word Nintendo could also mean the Temple of Free Hanafuda, or the company that is allowed to make Hanafuda. Fun fact, Yamauchi's first major customers were members of the Japanese Mafia, known as the Yakuza. Since Hanafuda did not contain numbers and were legal, the playing cards were used as a way for the Yakuza to get around the law and to continue gambling, which was very much illegal. In 1933, the company was incorporated as Yamauchi Nintendo Unlimited. When the sale of foreign playing cards was allowed to resume following the Second World War, it became Marufuku Company Limited. In 1949, the great-grandson of Fusahiro Yamauchi, Hiroshi Yamauchi, joined the company. Under his leadership, Nintendo transformed from a Hanafuda card-making company to a multi-billion dollar video game publisher that is, to this day, one of the most successful video game companies in the world. Due to the company's massive success, he became Japan's wealthiest person in 2008 with a fortune of an estimated 7.8 billion. Not bad for a guy who started out making playing cards. Now though, let's go back and see how Nintendo managed to become so incredibly successful. In 1951, the name was changed again to Nintendo Playing Card Company Limited. And in 1959, Nintendo entered into an agreement with Walt Disney to use Disney characters on their cards. However, during the 1960s, playing cards were becoming less popular among Japanese households, and the company's stock began to plummet, from 900 yen all the way down to just 60 yen. In response, the company simplified its name to just Nintendo Company Limited in 1963 and began looking to make money in other industries. Early business ventures included investments in packaged instant rice, taxi services, and not-so-family-friendly love hotels. Mm. Thankfully, mm. none of those ventures paid off, and it was in the toy industry that Nintendo found a foothold. In 1970, they released the first solar-powered light gun, the Nintendo Beam Gun, which would become an ancestor to the NES Zapper that was later used in video games such as Duck Hunt. In 1972, Nintendo entered into a partnership with the creators of the first commercial home video game console, the Magnavox Odyssey. With Nintendo developing and producing optoelectronic guns for the US-born console, Two years later, Nintendo also secured the rights to distribute the Magnavox Odyssey in Japan. Having witnessed firsthand how popular video games were, Nintendo soon got to work building their own consoles. Well, kind of. Fun fact, Nintendo still produces Hanafuda cards to pay homage to their history. In 2007, 
they released Mario-themed Hanafuda cards, which could be obtained through their Club Nintendo service. These cards feature Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, and other familiar faces from the Mario series. In 1977, Nintendo and Mitsubishi started a joint effort. The two companies teamed up to release a new games console, which was given the unimaginative title of Color TV Game 6. Unsurprisingly, it could be played on a color TV, and the number 6 denoted how many games were on it, except they were all variations of the game Pong. They retailed at a price of 9,800 yen, which is equal to around $110 by today's standards. It was the first of five systems released between 1977 and 1980, exclusively in Japan as part of the TV game series of home video game consoles. Next came the Color TV Game 15, which cost 15,000 yen when it launched a week later. It contained 15 variations of Pong and had detachable controllers, which were stored in a small compartment on the system itself. Exactly one year later, in June 1978, Nintendo and Mitsubishi released their third console, the Color TV Game Racing 112. It was initially priced at 18,000 yen, but that was reduced to 12,000 yen to stay competitive. The console had a detachable steering wheel, and the built-in game was a top-down racer similar to Speed Race, an arcade game produced by Taito in 1974. Guess how many variations of the game you could play? That's right, 112. The console did also come with two paddle controllers if you wanted to play multiplayer. The next system came almost another year later, when in April 1979, the Color TV game block Kazushi was released with a price tag of 13,500 yen. If you've ever played the game Breakout, this was essentially just six different versions of that. The last of the five Color TV game consoles came in 1980 with the computer TV game produced in limited quantities because of a downward trend in dedicated consoles at the time. This console is extremely rare. It featured a remake of Nintendo's arcade game titled Computer Othello, which is significant as it was the very first video game to be both published and developed by Nintendo. It's basically a computerized version of the board game called Othello, which is a variant of the strategy game Reversi. Nintendo was also developing other games for arcades at this time, including the likes of Donkey Kong and Mario Brothers, which would later be ported to consoles as well. Fun fact, because the block Kazushi console was developed exclusively by Nintendo, not in partnership with Mitsubishi, it was the first console to proudly feature the Nintendo logo on the front. What's more, the system's casing was designed by Shigeru Miyamoto, the same guy who created Mario. The company's first venture into handheld electronic gaming came in 1980 with the Game & Watch. Par for the course with Nintendo's matter-of-fact naming system, it featured a single game and a watch, or clock, on an LCD screen. Many Game & Watch variants were made, however. Some looked drastically different, like the multi-screen, which featured two screens and a clamshell design that would later be replicated in future Nintendo handhelds. Up until 1991, Nintendo had released 60 different Game & Watch games, including Ball, which became one of Nintendo's first major hits. Fire, where you have to guide a man as he falls from a burning building. Then there's Snoopy Tennis, which is exactly what it sounds like. And of course, who could forget Donkey Kong Jr.? But my personal favorite is Mario the Juggler, where you have to help Mario keep as many balls in the air as possible. To keep gamers entertained, most games came with two modes, Game A representing the easy mode and Game B representing a faster, harder version of the same game. A game titled Fire Attack became the center of a lot of controversy for Nintendo because of its depiction of Native Americans. In the game, the player controls a cowboy, defending his fort from an onslaught of Native Americans attempting to burn the fort down. The game was deemed as racist because of the stereotype it portrayed of Native Americans. 
when the game was re-released for the Game Boy Advance, in the title Game Boy Gallery 4, the racial aspects of the character were removed. Interestingly, Mr. Game & Watch, who appeared originally as a character in Ball, Judge, Manhole, and multiple other Game & Watch titles, also became a playable character in the Super Smash Bros. series. In fact, Mr. Game & Watch is the oldest character in Smash, beating Pac-Man by just one month. The Game & Watch became a commercial success and sold a whopping 43.4 million units worldwide. In 2020, Nintendo released a special version of the Game & Watch to celebrate the system's 40th anniversary, as well as the 35th anniversary of Super Mario Bros. One year later, Nintendo also released the Game & Watch The Legend of Zelda, which features the original The Legend of Zelda, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, and Link's Awakening. Fun fact, the idea of the Game & Watch was conceived by Gunpai Yokoi, who was inspired after seeing a bored man play with his calculator on the train. Yokoi then thought of an idea for a watch that doubled as a miniature game machine to pass the time when you were bored. In 1985, Nintendo hit its first home run with the release of the much-loved Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. It was Nintendo's first home video game console to be launched outside of Japan. People loved the NES so much that it quickly became a household name. A different-looking version had already become available within Japan as of 1983, known as the Family Computer or Famicom. And while some games and art styles varied, the consoles were essentially the same in terms of performance. Incidentally, Nintendo almost partnered up with Atari to bring the Famicom to North America, which would have meant that we would all be playing Super Mario Brothers on an Atari console. Nintendo offered Atari the chance to sell the console under the Atari brand in exchange for royalties on each console sold. However, the contract was never signed, and Nintendo replaced Atari in the video game market entirely. The NES was praised for its simple, yet at the time, innovative controller. Joysticks were the common method of control before Nintendo designed and patented their D-pad. Even though the trend has now reversed, with joysticks often being preferred, D-pads were much better for playing 2D games like Donkey Kong, which, by the way, was the first game that involved jumping and can therefore be considered the first true platformer. To say the NES was significant is an understatement. It single-handedly revived the video game industry after the crash of 1983, going on to sell 62 million units worldwide and setting the record for the longest surviving video game system in history. It stayed on the American market until 1995, and in Japan, it wasn't discontinued until 2003. It's no wonder that the NES was such a successful console. It had some of the best classic games ever made. Many of Nintendo's most successful game franchises were born on the NES, like Final Fantasy, Castlevania, Metroid, and The Legend of Zelda. But there is more, including the classic game of Duck Hunt, which became the second most sold game on the NES. The game was so popular that even the ducks were getting tired of being shot at. But the top-selling game, with over 40 million copies sold, was, of course, Super Mario Brothers. Let's talk about Mario for a second. It's me, Mario! One of the most important and iconic characters Nintendo has ever created. This legendary character first appeared as the main protagonist in the 1981 arcade game Donkey Kong. He didn't have a name yet, so in Japan, he was first called Osan, which translates to middle-aged guy. Legendary creator Shigeru Miyamoto wanted a solid name for the character and decided to call him Mr. Video. Miyamoto later acknowledged that this wasn't the best name and said, quote, if he had been called Mr. Video, he might have disappeared off the face of the earth. In the 8-bit era, creating characters was very limited. To make the design look like a man as much as possible, Miyamoto started by drawing the nose and gave Mario his mustache to make the character more recognizable.
The red shirt and blue overall was to create contrast against the background. The red cap was also added to avoid drawing the character's hairstyle and eyebrows. Over the years, Mario's design changed significantly as technology evolved. A very important market for Nintendo was the United States. In the U.S., he was named Jumpman, which became his first official name. This was because he had one signature move, and that was, of course, jumping. The name was originally chosen for its similarity to the name Pac-Man, but they weren't satisfied with his name. During a brainstorm for a better name, landlord Mario Sigali confronted the former president of Nintendo of America, demanding that he pay his rent. This inspired them to name the character after the Italian-American landlord. According to Miyamoto, Mario Sigali looked exactly like their video game character. He also thought it was a nice name, so the character was named Mario. Mario Sigali was later asked what he thought of the video game character that was named after him. He said, quote, you might say, I'm still waiting for my royalty checks. Mario was a more relatable name than Jumpman and thus suited the Italian hero perfectly. Just two years after Donkey Kong in 1983, Mario received his first game, Mario Brothers. Since Mario was born in 1981, he was technically nowhere near old enough to be working on all those pipes when the first Mario Brothers game debuted in 1983. But at least he was small enough to get in there and get the work done. Mario also got his own world and a twin brother named Luigi. Miyamoto just swapped two of Mario's colors to create Luigi. Very creative. It's amazing what a little bit of color swapping can do. Mario would become the face of Nintendo and appeared in countless games. In fact, there are over 200 different Mario games. The franchise is a major commercial success and sold over 760 million games, making it by far the best-selling video game franchise in the world, with no sign of slowing down. Mario also became a movie star with the 2023 The Super Mario Brothers movie, which became a massive commercial success. With over $1.3 billion, it became the 15th highest grossing movie of all time. Not bad for an Italian plumber. On the brothers. Huh. Thank you, Super Mario Bros. It seems like the only thing you haven't drained is my bank account. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. We've also created a six episode series about the evolution of Super Mario. Check it out after this video if you'd like to see how much Mario has changed over the years, from his humble beginnings as a little 8-bit character to the high-definition hero he is today. <laughs> However, it all started with the iconic Super Mario Bros. game on the NES from 1985, which to this day remains sixth on the best-selling video games of all time, for the NES, over 40 million copies of the game were sold. But if you also include remasters and re-releases, that number stands at an astonishing 67.6 .6 million copies. That's a lot of people who had to blow into the cartridge to get it to work. The NES was a revolutionary game console that changed the gaming landscape forever. Fun fact, did you know that before the creation of Mario, Nintendo wanted to use Popeye as the protagonist in the 1981 Donkey Kong game? That's right, we almost had a spinach-eating sailor man instead of the lovable Italian plumber. However, Nintendo was unable to get the licensing rights, so they created Mario instead. They said it wasn't humanly possible. All the power and excitement of Nintendo right in the palm of your hand. Introducing Game Boy. It's portable, it's in stereo, and its games are interchangeable. In 1989, Nintendo offered more versatility to gamers in the form of a handheld, brick-like console that used interchangeable ROM cartridges. This meant that gamers could simply buy a game rather than a new device each time they wanted a different experience. Of course, the handheld we're talking about is the original Game Boy. It's hard to believe that the Game Boy is still popular today, considering it was first released over 30 years ago. But I guess there's just something about portable, durable gaming that keeps people coming back for more. And who can resist those amazing titles? Tetris. 
The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening. Kirby's Dream Land. And of course, Super Mario Land. Not to mention, it was a pretty good deal at just $90. The Game Boy's library was stacked full of classics, including the hugely popular Pokemon games, notably Pokemon Yellow, as well as the red and blue versions. Who doesn't love Pokemon? It all started on the Game Boy, and these cute little creatures have been charming fans for over two decades and show no signs of slowing down. I mean, who can resist all those adorable little faces? Charmander. Charmander! Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. Squirtle. Squirtle, Squirtle. They're all so cute. And who doesn't love Pikachu? He's the official mascot of Pokemon, after all. Pikachu! 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 Whether you grew up with the original 151 or you're a more recent fan of the franchise, there is no denying that Pokemon is a global phenomenon. It is a behemoth franchise with a total revenue of a whopping, wait for it, 118.5 billion. To put that into perspective, if Pokemon was a country, it would have the 59th largest economy in the world, ahead of countries like Morocco and Iceland. And if Pikachu was its president, I would definitely vote for him. Pokemon is by far the highest grossing media franchise in the world, which includes not just video games, but also books, movies, and television shows. It's even bigger than franchises like Star Wars, Marvel, Avengers! Assemble. No! Harry Potter. The boy who lived. Come to die. And Mario. Uh, oh! Pokemon was created by Satoshi Tajiri in 1996, and he sure knows how to make a timeless franchise I mean, just look at how popular Pokemon still is today, over 20 years after its inception. And with new games being released regularly, like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, it doesn't look like the franchise is going to slow down anytime soon. There are also multiple mobile games, including Pokemon Go. which have reached over 1 billion mobile downloads. In total, a mind-blowing 440 million Pokemon games have been sold. Who would have thought that so many people would be interested in catching little creatures and training them to fight other creatures? But it isn't just games that make this franchise so popular. It also spawned a hugely successful anime television series with over 20 seasons and a whopping 1,000 episodes in 192 countries a Pokemon trading card game that is the highest selling trading card game of all time. With over 43.2 billion cards sold. That's a lot of Pikachu and Charizard cards. Pokemon toys, which are available in a wide variety of forms from traditional action figures to cuddly plush toys. And there is much, much more, including music, books, and anime film series merchandise, and a live-action film known as Detective Pikachu. If you're a fan of Pikachu, then you're in for a real treat. Did you just talk? Whoa. Did you just understand me? Oh my god! You can understand me! Stop! I've been so lonely! There is ever so much more to cover, so subscribe and leave a comment if you want to see the evolution of Pokemon. What a wild ride it's been since Pokemon first hit the scene in 1996. And to think, it all started with a little yellow creature that could only say its own name. For now though, let's go back to the beginning with the OG Game Boy and Pokemon Red, Green, Blue, and Yellow. Those games had some serious sales numbers, moving 46 million copies. Three years later, Nintendo came out with Pokemon Gold and Silver, which also became a huge commercial success. The Pokemon franchise was, without a doubt, a massive contributor to the success of the Game Boy, 
In total, more than 64.4 million Game Boys have been sold worldwide, making it one of the most popular consoles of all time. It has since become a collector's item, with people still playing on the handheld console to this day. Fun fact, Game Boys are so durable that one even survived a bombing during the Gulf War, and despite being heavily scorched, it was still playable. That's one tough little machine. The much-anticipated successor to the NES was the SNES, released in 1991 in the United States with the new S standing for Super. Hence, the Famicom, released one year earlier in Japan, also became the Super Famicom. At the time, Nintendo and Sega were going head-to-head -head in what is referred to as the Bit Wars. Nintendo had the SNES, while Sega had the Genesis. Nintendo, at this point, had a much bigger following, and also a larger budget. So Sega had to think outside of the box to gain more attention. That's when they released their ad campaign and started to take jabs at Nintendo. Free your columns free. What Nintendo? Mario continued its legacy on the SNES with multiple Mario games, including Super Mario All-Stars, Super Mario Kart, and Super Mario World which is often considered one of the greatest video games ever made. It was a huge commercial success, selling over 20 million copies worldwide. That makes it the best-selling SNES title of all time. Since Nintendo had huge success with Mario, Sega was inspired to do the same and created one of the most iconic mascots ever, Sonic the Hedgehog. Since its inception, with the first Sonic the Hedgehog game in 1991, the Speedy Blue Hedgehog quickly became one of the world's most well-known video game characters. He has appeared in countless games, television shows, comics, and movies. While their competition is fierce, Sonic and Mario both have a long history of gaming excellence. It is safe to say that both characters are legendary icons of the gaming world, and their games are some of the most popular and well-loved of all time. Both the SNES and the Sega Genesis saw significant increases in processing power, which led to better 16-bit graphics that simulated 3D effects, clearer sound, faster gameplay, and more advanced cartridges. The SNES controller also got a makeover, with rounded edges replacing the former rectangular design, and additional buttons added to both the front and shoulders of the gamepad. This gave players more options when playing games like The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, and Super Metroid. The SNES was home to some of the most classic games of all time. From Star Fox to Street Fighter II, there was something for everyone, but the console didn't stop there. It also had sequels to popular franchises, such as Mega Man X. Final Fantasy VI, and Donkey Kong Country. The SNES was priced at $200, and although it didn't sell as many units as the original NES, it still ended up outselling its closest rival, the Sega Genesis, with 49.1 million units sold compared to 35 million units. The third best-selling console at the time was the TurboGrafx-16, which lagged way behind with sales of 10 million units. The SNES became the clear winner of the 16-bit era. With Nintendo seemingly on a roll, there came a major bump in the road when a headache-inducing monstrosity hit store shelves in 1995. It was called the Virtual Boy. Nintendo's 32-bit video game console with a head-mounted display did not fare well. one problem. It needs your eyes. Despite boasting that the Virtual Boy was the first video game console to display stereoscopic 3D graphics, the games were displayed only in black and red because, according to Nintendo, a color display would have made the system too expensive and resulted in jumpy images. The Virtual Boy was doomed from the start, with its high price tag of $180 and its uncomfortable, non-portable design. Not to mention, it caused gamers to experience dizziness and headaches. The limited games library included Mario's Tennis, Wario Land, and 3D Tetris. Unsurprisingly, the Virtual Boy became one of the worst-selling consoles of all time, 
selling roughly 770,000 units and being mysteriously absent from the history section on Nintendo's own website. I guess even they try to forget about this one. Fun fact, Gunpai Yokoi was an incredibly important figure for Nintendo and is best known as the creator of the Game & Watch, the original designer of the Game Boy and producer of the critically acclaimed video game franchises such as Kid Icarus and Metroid. But soon after the release of the Virtual Boy, he left Nintendo. Yokoi was said to be blamed for the massive failure of the console and that this was one of the contributing reasons for leaving the company. Though Nintendo stated that Yokoi's departure after the failure of the Virtual Boy was absolutely coincidental, nonetheless, he founded his own company and created the Wonder Swan, a handheld system to compete with the Game Boy. Overall, 3.5 million units were sold, and it was the last piece of hardware Yokoi developed before his death in 1997. Thankfully, it didn't take Nintendo long to get back on the right track as they released their next generation of console, the Nintendo 64, in 1996. There were many significant changes over the SNES. The N64 controller, for example, was a massive change, featuring a three-pronged design with a central joystick, D-pad, face and shoulder buttons, plus a trigger button at the back. Nintendo of America's lead designer, Lance Barr, said that design studies revealed that most games use a few buttons for most of the main controls, such as jumping and shooting, or acceleration and braking. This led to a controller that had to be held in three different positions. First, there was the conventional way. Players could use the D-pad, right face buttons, and the shoulder buttons. This style was intended to optimize play in 2D games like Yoshi's Story and Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards. The second way could be used to use the control stick, the right hand buttons and shoulder buttons, and the Z trigger on the rear. This style was the most common way to hold an N64 controller, since it was intended for 3D games, including Super Mario 64, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and Banjo-Kazooie. And finally, users could hold the control stick, D-pad, left shoulder button, and Z-trigger. This is by far the least common way to hold an N64 controller. This setup could be used in GoldenEye 007 or first-person shooters such as Perfect Dark. The Nintendo 64's name comes from its 64-bit CPU, which took major steps forward in terms of its modern 3D graphics. It was also possible to connect up to four controllers and beat your friends in Diddy Kong Racing and show them who's boss. <laughs> However, despite these enhancements, Nintendo faced increasing competition due to the huge success of Sony's PlayStation, which had already been out for two years at that point. While the N64 managed to outsell the Sega Saturn with sales figures of 33 million compared to just 9 million, the cartridge-based N64 was no match for the CD-based PlayStation, which took over the crown as the market leader and sold more than double the amount of the other two combined, with total sales of over 102 million units. In a trend that still holds true today, Nintendo came to be recognized as a source of fun and entertainment for families, rather than a serious gaming console for individuals. Nintendo's games tended to have much more cartoon-like graphics and fantasy-based characters compared to the added realism brought by other machines. Fun fact, while the multiplayer mode for GoldenEye is considered by many to be a classic, it was a last-minute addition to the game that Nintendo didn't even know about. Developer Steve Ellis had access to the code written for the single-player title and, at the last moment, decided to turn GoldenEye into a multiplayer game over the course of just one month without telling development managers at Rare or the publishing bosses at Nintendo. Pretty sneaky, Steve, but thank you. Besides the original Game Boy, Nintendo released a compact version, the Game Boy Pocket, in 1996. It was notably smaller and lighter and came in different colors, 
This Game Boy had a black and white display rather than the green tinted display of the original. Two years later, the Game Boy Light hit shelves, exclusively in Japan. The Game Boy's screen was difficult to see in the dark, and the Game Boy Light fixed that problem with a backlight. People were finally able to play their favorite titles in the dark. The Game Boy Color was also introduced in 1998 and was a real game changer. It came in multiple colors, while doubling the processing speed and tripling the internal memory of the original Game Boy. But the best part? It could display games in 56 colors. Many titles, such as Wario Land, were adapted and brought to life on the Game Boy Color. Even established home console games like Super Mario Bros. were given a colorful remake, re-releasing as Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, 14 years after the original title had found fame on the NES. Other popular titles, like Tetris and The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, were also re-released with color. Speaking of which, The Legend of Zelda series was introduced in 1986, when the original title was re-released for the NES. Since then, the franchise has seen many iterations over the years, with multiple games considered among the greatest video games of all time. Shigeru Miyamoto loved adventures as a kid, especially the time he went into a cave with a lantern after days of hesitation. These adventures inspired Miyamoto to create The Legend of Zelda, a franchise that largely takes place in the fantasy kingdom of Hyrule. Zelda games have been praised for their innovation and creativity. It's fair to say that Miyamoto probably didn't envision The Legend of Zelda becoming the mammoth franchise it is today. After all, there have been 20 major releases, with the latest title being Tears of the Kingdom. Link. Which in its first three days of release already sold more than 10 million copies. The Legend of Zelda is one of the most popular franchises of all time. As of March 2022, more than 136 million copies have been sold worldwide. If you'd like to know how the franchise has evolved over the years, why not watch the evolution of The Legend of Zelda after this video? Now though, let's go back to the Game Boy Color. There were many exclusives released for the handheld, including Pokemon Gold and Silver, but also games based on TV shows like Ants and Shrek that helped to attract an entirely new audience. Oh man, I miss that green, lovable, ugly ogre. The Game Boy and the Game Boy Color were massive commercial successes. In fact, a whopping 118.7 million units were sold. Fun fact, American actor and comedian Robin Williams was a huge fan of the Zelda series. So much so that he named his daughter Zelda. He would often tell stories about how much he loved playing the games and how happy they made him. Robin Williams was one of the funniest comedians of all time and will be forever missed. Rest in peace, legend. I faced adversity. I became a hero. Dad. I saved your kingdom. Dad. Yes, Zelda? Are you mixing me up with the princess again? Hard to say, you're both pretty magical. Three years later than planned, in 2001, the Game Boy Advance was launched. It had a landscape design and incorporated shoulder buttons, which is why they called it the Advance. With processing power similar to that of the SNES, the Advance's game library was full of SNES ports, allowing gamers to play the same epic titles while on the move. This, of course, included the greats, like Super Mario World, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, and games from the Final Fantasy series. Pokemon games like Ruby and Sapphire were also big hits with Advance owners, even though players had to start all over again with catching them all. A compact, foldable version of the Game Boy Advance came out in 2003, known as the SP. The original Game Boy Advance received complaints due to the dark screen, and the SP fixed that problem, using a significantly brighter LCD screen and an internal front light. It was also the first of Nintendo's handheld lineup with a rechargeable battery. In total, the Nintendo Advance family sold over 81.5 million units globally. I bet a good chunk of those were just bought by parents desperate to keep their kids quiet on long car rides. Fun fact, WarioWare Incorporated on the Game Boy Advance has a minigame called Shiratori, which involves sucking up trash with a vacuum cleaner. 
This is a tribute to the real-life vacuum cleaner made by Nintendo back in 1979, which was a tiny, remote-controlled Roomba-like device that measured only 16 centimeters across and would have taken days to actually clean the room of a house. A console you probably never heard of before is the Pokemon Mini, released in 2001. It was the smallest game system Nintendo created and themed around the Pokemon franchise. In total, only 10 games were released for the Pokemon Mini, most of which were only available in Japan. Although it's unknown how many units were sold, the Pokemon Mini certainly wasn't a success. It was discontinued a year after its release. Even Pikachu couldn't save it. Also released in 2001 was the Nintendo GameCube, which aimed to catch up with competitors by being the first Nintendo system to use optical discs instead of cartridges for its games. However, it had to put up a fight against the PlayStation 2 and Microsoft's Xbox. The GameCube looked much more kid-friendly and like a toy in comparison to its rivals. Despite its name, it wasn't even a cube. It measured 5.9 by 6.3 by 4.3 inches. Nintendo got rid of the three-pronged controller design for the N64 and instead opted for a more traditional two-pronged version. In 2002, Nintendo made a wireless controller called the WaveBird, which came before any of the wireless controllers for the Xbox or PlayStation. While the GameCube did use optical discs, Nintendo opted for mini-discs, as opposed to CDs or DVDs like its competitors. Whereas DVDs could store up to 8.5 gigabytes of data, the GameCube discs could only store 1.5 gigabytes. This meant that some cross-platform content had to be compressed or features removed from games entirely. Another major drawback was the lack of online gameplay. Reportedly, the GameCube only had eight games with internet or local area network support. The console didn't feature an internal hard drive either and relied on the use of memory cards. Despite the drawbacks, there were many amazing titles for gamers to enjoy, including Super Smash Bros. Melee, The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker, Mario Kart, Double Dash, Super Mario Sunshine, and Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is another major Nintendo franchise. In the games, players do, well, not much. Just sit around and wait for cool stuff to happen, like finding a fossil, or getting stung by a bee. It's one of the most laid back games ever developed with you simply wandering around, catching fish, making friends with local animal creatures, and performing mundane duties. But don't be fooled. Before you know, you're addicted and have spent hours upon hours in front of your Switch. In 2020, the latest entry in the series was released and became an instant hit. Much of its success can be attributed to the stay-at-home orders of the COVID-19 pandemic. Overall, the Animal Crossing franchise proved to be yet another critical and commercial success and has sold over 72 million copies worldwide. We've also made an evolution of Animal Crossing, so be sure to check it out. Just like Animal Crossing, the GameCube also became a success and Nintendo managed to sell 22 million units, almost equaling Microsoft's sales of 24 million Xboxes. However, both paled in comparison to Sony's record of more than 155 million PlayStation 2s sold. Wow, Sony really was sitting on a gold mine with the PlayStation 2. Fun fact, Animal Crossing New Horizons was used by activists during the Hong Kong protests to fight for democracy. One of the activists, Joshua Wong, said Animal Crossing is a place without political censorship, so it is a good place to continue our fight. Well, the Chinese government wasn't too happy with it, which even led to the removal of the game from Chinese online stores. So next time you're playing Animal Crossing, just remember, you could be taking part in a global struggle for democracy. Or you could just be playing a game about fishing and catching bugs. Your choice.
2004 welcomed the arrival of the Nintendo DS, with DS standing for both developer's system and dual screen, according to the company, as it featured a bottom touch screen in addition to a top display screen, making it a unique gaming experience. The DS came with a stylus for finer touch screen control, a built-in microphone that allowed for voice recording and voice recognition, as well as Wi-Fi capabilities. The cartridges were made much smaller than the cartridges of the Game Boy Advance. It had two slots, so games of both cartridges could be played on the DS, making it backwards compatible. When playing games, one screen was used to show the main action, while the other was used for things like a map, inventory, or secondary viewpoint. Due to its unique dual screen action, many new titles were unveiled by Nintendo, like Brain Age and Nintendogs, which sure got many tails wagging as it was the second most sold game on the DS. But the real winner was Mario, taking the crown again with new Super Mario Brothers. Here we go! Other great titles launched for the DS were Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, Animal Crossing Wild World, and Kirby Canvas Curse. Kirby is a lovable little Nintendo superstar that first appeared in Kirby's Dream Land on the Game Boy in 1992. The pink puffball has the ability to inhale objects and creatures to gain their powers. But did you know his original name was Popopo? Kirby has starred in over 40 games, ranging from action platformers to puzzle, pinball, and racing games. Kirby's insatiable appetite for new games shows no signs of slowing down, with recent releases including Kirby Star Allies, Kirby's Dream Buffet, and Kirby and the Forgotten Land which became the first Kirby game to beat the original title in terms of sales numbers. But that's not all. Kirby also has his own manga and anime series. They're both super popular in Japan, and Kirby is a bona fide superstar over there. Even though the series isn't as big as Pokemon, Super Mario, or Legend of Zelda, the Kirby series continues to be another success for Nintendo and has sold over 40 million units worldwide. What can I say? The little pink puff ball is just too darn lovable. Now though, let's go back to the Nintendo DS. A refined version of the DS came out in 2006, named the DS Lite. It was slimmer and lighter. It had a longer lasting battery and a brighter screen. It was not the slimmest of the DS range though, because in 2008, the new DSi model had an ultra-slim build, plus larger screens. It also introduced two digital cameras, but it wasn't backwards compatible. One year later, the DSi XL further improved upon the handheld specifications by increasing the screen sizes once more. It also had improved speakers and longer battery life. The PlayStation Portable, or PSP, was released in the same year as the original DS and became its main competitor. However, it was no match for the Nintendo DS, which became the highest selling handheld console of all time, selling more than 154 million units around the world. Fun fact, did you know that Kirby is actually a lawyer? At least, the video game character is named after human lawyer John Kirby, who worked for Nintendo and successfully defended the company in a lawsuit wherein Universal Studios claimed that Donkey Kong violated copyright for Universal's King Kong character. This proved yet again no happy ending for the giant 25-ton gorilla. Nintendo drastically changed its game plan when it released the Wii console in 2006. It centered around the use of motion controls, and the technology was both innovative and unique for its time. The Wii Remote, the primary controller for the Wii, allowed users to control the game using physical gestures. It used Bluetooth and featured a D-pad, buttons, plus an internal speaker. It was all fun 
until you would accidentally hit someone with it though. The nunchuck was an additional controller that could be connected to the Wii Remote and had an analog stick plus two trigger buttons. Its specifications in terms of its processor, memory, and graphics, which weren't even HD, were far less impressive than the competition. But those things were never intended to be the main selling point. Nintendo had reverted to selling fun, and we all know that's something they're good at. Memorable games from the Wii lineup include the new Super Mario Bros. Wii, Mario Kart Wii, Super Mario Galaxy, Mario Party 8, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, and Wii Sports. Did you know the Wii series is another major Nintendo franchise? It features multiple simulation games that have been published for the Wii, Wii U, and the Nintendo Switch. The Wii series was conceived by none other than Shigeru Miyamoto in 2006. I mean, this man is a genius. It's no surprise. Wii Sports was the first title to be released in the series, and it consists of five separate sports games. Wii Sports became a massive success and sold over 82 million copies. This makes it the fourth most sold game of all time, only after Minecraft, Grand Theft Auto V, and Tetris. Since its release, many games in the Wii series have been released, including Wii Sports Resort, Wii Sports Club, and the latest title being Nintendo Switch Sports, One. which still belongs to the Wii series, despite not having Wii in its title. There were also multiple Wii games that required the Wii Balance Board. This board was designed for use with exercise and sports games like Wii Fit, Wii Fit Plus, and Wii Fit U. The board alone sold a whopping 42 million units. The Wii series is a massive success. It even beats The Legend of Zelda, Animal Crossing, Kirby, and Donkey Kong, and has sold over 200 million copies. But who cares about sales when you can finally beat your friends at tennis? While some people chuckled upon first hearing the name of the Wii console, the Wii, supposed to mean we as in us, emphasized that the console was for everyone. This positioned the system as a family device and meant that Nintendo's target audience was much broader than its rivals. As a result, Nintendo saw a big leap in sales, as a staggering 102 million Wii consoles were sold, beating both the PS3 and Xbox 360, which sold 87 and 86 million units, respectively. Minor alterations were made to the Wii to extend its lifespan and make it more accessible. In 2009, Nintendo released the Wii Family Edition, which was designed to sit horizontally rather than vertically and was cheaper since it cost $150 compared to $250 for the original console. In 2012, Nintendo also released the Wii Mini in Canada for $100 Canadian dollars. As suggested by the name, it was smaller and lacked certain features, such as internet connectivity, which helped to lower the price significantly. Fun fact, if you're ever in the city of Zaragoza in Spain, you can visit La Avenida de Super Mario Brothers, a street that was named after the game in 2010. The neighborhood's president said, we wanted to be the first neighborhood in the world to dedicate a street to one of the most emblematic characters of our modern culture. Sadly though, a quick look on Google Maps shows the avenue is looking pretty run down these days. Plus, the statue of Mario appears to be gone. Nintendo introduced 3D gameplay to their handheld consoles in 2011, releasing a brand new system dubbed the Nintendo 3DS. The bottom screen was a touch screen, similar to the one seen in former DS models. However, the top screen was wide with better graphics and had an auto stereoscopic 3D LCD design. This meant that gamers could turn on 3D effects without the need for 3D glasses, or clothes for that matter. The console itself had multiple cameras, 
a circle pad alongside the traditional D-pad for easier gameplay, and internet connectivity with an improved online experience. Games that could be enjoyed on the 3DS were Pokemon X and Y. New Super Mario Bros. 2. Luigi! And Mario Kart 7, the most sold game on the handheld and the ultimate test of friendship. Upgraded versions of the 3DS were soon released. In 2012 came the 3DS XL, which had much larger screens and improved battery life. Perfect for those midnight gaming sessions. Nintendo released a 2DS version in 2013, taking away the 3D graphics, but making it more affordable. The new Nintendo 3DS was introduced in 2014. It fixed the problem of having to face your 3DS straight on, or else the 3D effect would become blurry. It also had a more powerful processor and additional shoulder buttons. A larger version, the new Nintendo 3DS XL, was also introduced at the same time. And finally, in 2017, Nintendo made the new Nintendo 2DS XL, featuring additional hardware features but without the 3D functionality. To date, total sales of the 3DS and 2DS consoles add up to over 75.9 million units, making it one of the most popular handheld consoles ever. The Wii U was released in 2012 and quickly became one of Nintendo's biggest flops. Simply put, it was an example of very, very bad marketing. People were confused about whether it was a new console or just an accessory for the Wii. And it's easy to understand why if you look at the trailer for the Wii U. They literally named it the new controller. What were they thinking? Even Wii 2 would have been a better name. At least most people wouldn't have thought it was an accessory for the Wii. Oh, and the ads were terrible. And it comes with two free games. Hot button popcorn, that's a deal. To clarify, it was a new console and the Wii U gamepad was the primary controller with a built-in touchscreen. This meant it could be played without connecting to a television or used as a companion to games that were being played through a TV. The concept of a hybrid console had therefore been realized, but there was a lot of work to do in order to make it more appealing. The Wii U was the first Nintendo console to support HD graphics, allowing us to finally see Mario's mustache in high definition. Those who did buy the console were able to play Mario Kart 8. Super Mario 3D World. New Super Mario Brothers for you. And Splatoon. Splatoon became another hit for Nintendo and was created by video game designer Hisashi Nagami, who also created Animal Crossing. Even though there are currently just three games for the third-person shooter video game franchise, they've already sold over 18 million copies. Who knew so many people loved ink-based warfare? The Inklings have become so popular that the games have spawned a manga series, holographic music concerts in Japan, and, as of 2018, has its own eSports tournament circuit. The Wii U was also backwards compatible, allowing Wii games to be played on the console. It was a great feature, until your little sister claimed the TV to play Just Dance. Up against the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, of which over 117 million and 58 million were sold, respectively, the Wii U only sold 13 million units. It came as a huge commercial failure, especially after the overwhelming success of the original Wii. Despite the failure, it had a great library of games, and it's a shame that the console itself didn't do very well. Fun fact, up until 2016, Nintendo owned Major League Baseball team, the Seattle Mariners. Nintendo's third president, Hiroshi Yamauchi, the great-grandson of the company's founder, stepped up to buy the team in 1992, paving the way for several Japanese stars to sign with the team, most notably Ishiro Suzuki. Even Mario could be spotted at Safeco Field from time to time, but he was always too busy trying to beat his high score in Super Mario Brothers to catch a game. 
Nintendo sold most of its shares in the club in 2016, but still retains 10% ownership. Nintendo brought back the NES with the NES Classic Edition in 2016. While it looked the same as the original NES, it was much smaller. But don't worry, it still has all the original 8-bit butt-kicking power. The Classic Edition came with 30 built-in games from the NES library, including Mario Brothers, Pac-Man, and Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong is one of Nintendo's most beloved franchises. And, of course, it was created by the one and only Shigeru Miyamoto. The Big Ape has been a gaming icon since his first appearance in the 1981 arcade game Donkey Kong. The original Donkey Kong was later re-released for countless gaming consoles, including the Atari 2600, NES, Atari 7800, Nintendo 64, and Game Boy Advance. As of 2015, all versions of the original Donkey Kong are estimated to have grossed $4.4 billion in revenue. That's a lot of money for a game about a monkey throwing barrels. The phenomenal success of Donkey Kong not only saved Nintendo from financial ruin, but also led to market dominance for Nintendo from 1981 through the late 1990s debuted Mario, who became Nintendo's mascot, and one of the world's most recognizable characters, was one of the most important games from the golden age of arcade games, and a pioneer of the platform game genre. Wow. Well done, you giant ape. Since the first Donkey Kong game, many more popular Donkey Kong titles have been released, such as Donkey Kong Country, Diddy Kong Racing, Donkey Kong Returns, and the latest game in the franchise being Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. It's about time Nintendo creates another Donkey Kong game. It has been eight years already since its latest major release. I'm sure Donkey Kong is so hungry for bananas, he might go ape. The Donkey Kong series is another major success, and in total, over 80 million copies have been sold worldwide. Fun fact, how Donkey Kong received his name is still unclear. Some stories say Miyamoto created the name. He wanted to convey the idea of a stubborn ape. So, to replace the word stubborn, he used donkey, a word he found in an English pocket dictionary. To replace the word ape, he used Kong, since that was a generic term for large apes in Japan. However, other sources deny that Miyamoto created the name. Either way, when the name Donkey Kong was presented to Nintendo of America, they laughed and actually wanted to use another name. Miyamoto was eager to use the name and said, quote, I like the sound of it, so I decided to stand my ground on Donkey Kong. And within a year, everyone was saying Donkey Kong with no hesitation. In 2017, Nintendo also released the Super NES Classic which featured 21 built-in games from the SNES library. These included Super Metroid, Mega Man X, and Super Mario Kart. I'm not surprised that the NES and SNES classics are doing so well. I mean, who doesn't love a bit of nostalgia? As of 2018, combined sales of the NES and SNES Classic Editions exceeded 10 million units. Fun fact, in the theme park of Universal Studios Japan, there is an entire area devoted to Nintendo games. You can find shops, restaurants, and attractions, all based on your favorite franchises. With Shigeru Miyamoto so heavily involved in the design and construction of the land and its attractions, you can be sure it's going to be fantastic. The grand opening of the area was in 2021. Super Nintendo World is also coming to Universal Studios Singapore and Universal Studios Hollywood. The latter is scheduled to open in 2023, coinciding with the Super Mario Brothers movie. Whoa! Oh, you've got to be kidding me! <laughs> After the disastrous launch of the Wii U, Nintendo went back to the drawing board and refined its hybrid concept. Then, in 2017, they released the Nintendo Switch. And it was an astounding success. Priced at $300 in America and 30,000 yen in Japan, 
it featured two Joy-Con controllers that can be attached to a 6.2-inch touchscreen display. It was marketed primarily as a home console that could be played on the go, rather than a dedicated portable handheld system. While a regular Switch had about 2.5 to 6.5 hours of battery life, an extended battery version increased that to between 4.5 and 9 hours in 2019, which is almost enough time to finish Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury in one go. There are many amazing games in the Switch's library, including additions to much-loved franchises. The Pokemon franchise has sold over 93.6 million copies on the Switch, with hugely popular titles like Pokemon Sword and Shield, Pokemon Legend Arceus, and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The Legend of Zelda also continued its success with a remastered version of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening and Skyward Sword. But also one of the best games of all time, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In May 2023, the highly anticipated sequel of Breath of the Wild, Tears of Joy, I mean, Tears of Kingdom, was also released. Just a few months later in June 2023, over 18.5 million copies were already sold. The Zelda games have become a massive success on the Switch, and together, they've sold already over 60 million copies for the franchise, which is by far the most sold on a single platform for the series. After an eight-year gap, it was also time for a new Animal Crossing, and Nintendo went all out and created Animal Crossing New Horizons. It's the most successful title for the franchise by far, and the second most sold game on the Nintendo Switch, with 42.8 million copies sold. Wow, Tom Nook must be a billionaire by now. But of course, the most successful franchise by far on the console is Mario, which has sold a breathtaking 170 million copies on the Switch alone, with titles like Super Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Party, and the most sold Mario game ever, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. As of June 2023, 55.5 million copies have been sold. That's a lot of green shells flying around. Other hugely popular titles from other franchises include Splatoon 2, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is a smash hit. It's already sold 31.8 million copies, a record for the franchise. The Super Smash Bros. series started in 1999 for the Nintendo 64 and was created by Masahiro Sakurai. Since then, Five more Super Smash Bros. titles have been released for different consoles. The series feature characters from various Nintendo franchises, such as Super Mario, Donkey Kong, and The Legend of Zelda, as well as third-party franchises like Final Fantasy and Sonic the Hedgehog. The Super Smash Bros. games are especially praised for its multiplayer mode, and Nintendo Power calls it one of the greatest multiplayer experiences in Nintendo history. But let's be honest, the real fun is when you beat up your friends. The Super Smash Bros. series is yet another astonishing success for Nintendo, with 72.4 million copies sold in combined sales. But how could it not be? From Mario to Link to Pikachu, everyone's favorite Nintendo characters come together to battle it out in this series. The Nintendo Switch also allows for motion controls, which shine in games like Ring Fit Adventure and Nintendo Switch Sports. The Nintendo Switch is the perfect console for when you want to get fit or when you want to stay in bed and play video games all day. It's your choice.
the Nintendo Switch has achieved unparalleled success with over 1 billion game sales as of 2023. This monumental milestone makes it the highest selling gaming platform in Nintendo's history, surpassing both the Wii, which sold 922 million games, and the Nintendo DS, which boasted sales of 950 million games. This success can be attributed to its phenomenal library of games, which continues to captivate audiences worldwide. Excitement continues to build as more highly anticipated titles are on the horizon, including Hogwarts Legacy. Let's even her out, shall we? Sonic Superstars. And of course, the eagerly awaited Super Mario Brothers Wonder. A more affordable, light version of the Switch came out in 2019, with the limitation that it can only be played as a portable device. It can still run most of the same games as its older brother, though, except for games that are largely motion control based. In 2021, an upgraded version of the Switch was announced, the OLED model. It features a 7-inch Samsung OLED screen, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, an upgraded stand that players can adjust to their liking, and a built-in LAN port on the dock. So far, combined sales of the Nintendo Switch have surpassed an enormous 130 million. This places it third on the list of all-time best-selling game consoles. Fun fact, the coronavirus had a tremendous impact on sales of the Nintendo Switch, with stay-at-home orders boosting demand for the entertaining product. In fact, at the end of 2020, while many companies suffered losses and were struggling to keep their heads above the water due to the pandemic, Nintendo was raking in the dough, announcing a record for operating profits, which soared 82% from the year before to around 5.9 billion, or 640.6 billion yen. Going forward, It'll be interesting to see what the next major development or addition will be when it comes to video game consoles and their iconic and beloved characters. One thing is for sure, Nintendo isn't afraid to get creative and introduce exciting new technology. Let's hope Nintendo can continue creating smiles for generations to come, adding to its impressive 133 year plus history and an evolution like no other. Subscribe for more videos, and if you enjoyed this video, you might also like to see the evolution of PlayStation or Xbox.